a thick, juicy steak cooked to perfection needs little, if any, adornment. And I'm gonna prove that today. We're making beautifully pan-seared strip steaks. Now, you wanna buy steaks that weigh between 12 to 16 ounces a piece. And these are about one and a half inches thick. That's perfect for our needs today, nice and thick and juicy. One of the great things about strip steaks is the amount of marbling. It means beautiful flavor. Now, we don't need to trim too much of this fat off, but we do wanna just get a little bit. And I'm just gonna shave off a little of this thicker part, but we don't wanna go too crazy here. Leave on some of that fat. And I'm gonna do the same to this. And the only other thing I need to do is sprinkle each side with a teaspoon of kosher salt. Now these are going to go into the fridge for at least 45 minutes, but they can stay in there for up to 24 hours in advance because the salt is going to start to draw out some of those beef juices and then work its way into the meat. And it needs 45 minutes for that salt to work its way through. And now I'll just put them on this quarter sheet tray. You can also put them on a plate. I'm gonna go put these in the fridge. It's time to cook the steaks and they've been salting for about 45 minutes. So you can see there's a little bit of surface moisture here. I wanna get rid of that because surface moisture is the enemy of producing a really nice brown crust. And that's what we want. We want a really good developed brown crust with a nice rosy interior. So let me flip these over. Gotta pat the tray as well so we don't put it back down onto a wet tray. That's good enough. Again, they're seasoned with salt, but I do wanna hit them with some pepper. A teaspoon of pepper, working out of a little bowl here so I don't contaminate my pepper mill. All right, so this is where things get a little bit different and I gotta give credit to my friend Andrew who came up with this ingenious method. It really has saved my bacon when it comes to cooking steaks. It means I don't have to clean up all of that oil splatter all over my kitchen. So we're gonna put these steaks right into a nonstick skillet that is cold and there's no oil in the pan. This really is breaking all of the rules. Usually we'll preheat a pan, we'll put some oil in that, wait till that oil starts to smoke before we add the steaks. But again, you get all of that splatter. And I'm gonna turn this to high at this point. We're gonna cook these over high heat for two minutes a side, but since we started off in a cold skillet, it means that the steaks can warm up gradually. We're not gonna get a really thick band of gray around the perimeter. And there's no oil in the pan. You can already hear some of that fat rendering out of the steaks. There's just enough for them to cook in that fat. And then finally, it's a nonstick skillet. So any fond that is formed is going to stick to the steaks and not the pan. Time's up, time to flip. All right, second side. Yeah, that's not looking great at this point. I'm gonna start the timer again, two minutes, and we're gonna let it go over high for another two minutes before we flip again. Time to flip. So we're gonna flip again. Uh, you can see some of that browning happening. There we go, the pan's a little bit hotter, but I am gonna turn it down to medium. We wanna to start to build that crust and we don't wanna really blast it with heat at this point. So another two minutes. Boy, when you time two minutes, it's a long time. It's flipping time. That is gorgeous. So I'm gonna to continue to flip these every two minutes and I wanna cook them until they register between 120 and 125. That's how I like it, nice and medium rare. So it's a good idea to take the temperature a few times just to see where you are. And always pay more attention to your thermometer and the interior temperature of the meat than the recipe timing. Yeah, we got a ways to go here. Let's flip these over. And you can see every time I flip them over, they just start to look better and better. And you can see that that top is sizzling. Now that's a good example and a reason why I'm flipping these over every two minutes. Both the bottom is getting heated and the top that was just flipped over is still hot. So you're literally cooking these steaks from the bottom up and the top down. Let's flip them over and then take the temp again. I mean, come on. We're really building these beautiful crusts here. Now, check the temp on each of these. Nice and steamy. This one was just slightly thinner, just a tad. So I'm gonna take it out. And that's the beauty of this method as well. Just really wanna take the steaks out as they get to your preferred doneness. If you have people over that like them a little bit more well done, just leave the other steak in the skillet for a couple minutes more. All right, let's check this last steak in the pan. That one's mine. Now, before I tuck into these and slice them, 
want to let them rest for a good five minutes. That's really important anytime that you're cooking meat, especially over a relatively high heat, because you want to allow the meat to relax a little bit so they can reabsorb the juices. So five minutes, and then it's steak time. All right, it is time to cut into these steaks. Again, rested five minutes. Still, it's gonna be a little bit of juice coming out, but that's all right. So, just wanna slice these nice and thin. There's that beautiful, juicy, rosy center. Oh, this looks absolutely gorgeous. All right, so now, let me get some of this onto my plate. A really good steak needs very little adornment. That's why we're slicing them before we serve them, so you can hit it with a little bit of flake sea salt. You can use coarse sea salt as well, but that way you get a little bit of salt on every bite. All right. I mean, very juicy here. Incredibly beefy, beautifully cooked. That crust is amazing. It really is so full of flavor just gets better and better with each bite. It really is one of the best ways that you can cook steaks at home. And you're gonna wanna make this at home. So remember these keys. Start the steaks in a cold nonstick skillet. Turn this to high heat and flip every two minutes. And then lower the heat to finish cooking the steaks through. So from America's Test Kitchen at home, a mess-free, worry-free way to pan sear strip steaks. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.